Welcome to It's the Economy. The US inflation number has finally dropped below the 5% mark after nearly a year, taking US 10-year bond yields to 3.42, again, levels seen last September, September of 2022. The Indian 10-year bond yields have also consequently dipped towards 7%. India's April CPI number is expected tomorrow, and that will is also expected to fall below 5%, for the first time since October 2021, so almost a two-year low. The market is moving more firmly to the view that the Fed's and the RBI's rate hiking cycle is definitely over and done with. So how will smart money position itself across bonds and equities and across developed markets and emerging markets? I have with me Samir Goel, the global head of uh, emerging markets and APAC research at Deutsche Bank. Uh, good morning, Sami. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, well, that really is the first question. Uh, have the Fed rate hike cycle peaked? Because, uh, you know, we had, I think, uh, the New York Fed president saying as recently as 24 hours ago that they have not said that they are done with rate hikes. So, Lada, in our view, uh, the Fed cycle has peaked, uh, but it's maybe not quite as conclusive as what uh, the market would like it to be. I think um, <clears throat> the way I would think about it is the Fed's really facing a key challenge here where it feels like an equilibrium driven by you know, financial stability concerns is maybe increasingly getting disconnected from the equilibrium sort of based on your typical growth inflation classic uh, uh, sort of tailor rule kind of uh, thought process. And I think the difference is coming whether it is in terms of where the cycle peaks whether it is in terms of how quickly the cycle can reverse or whether even in terms of sort of the longer term real rate, the R star, if you might, as to where uh, equilibrium should eventually end up being. I think it will take uh, the next few months for us uh, to go and see through how much uh, what's happening with uh, the regional banking uh, system in the US and what that means for bank lending conditions, for financial conditions overall, how that interplays with uh, the real economy as it is evolving, both with the labor markets, and inflation to really be able to know whether uh, the Fed has conclusively got to uh, the peak of the cycle. Like I said, our view is that it has. Uh, our view is, uh, though, that uh, the market is maybe overpricing uh, the extent or the pace at which or the, or the timing of when the reversal of this, uh, you know, of this tightening can come. To our mind, uh, the tightening can probably only start to get reversed in first quarter of next year. Uh, but certainly, the next few months remain fairly uncertain in terms of the interplay between these, these two. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, the labor markets are not showing quite the same signs of easing up as probably what uh, the Fed or slackening as the Fed would have wanted. Uh, but on the other hand, we saw inflation prints yesterday. At least there are parts of it which seem encouraging, especially around uh, sort of core services, inflation kind of easing. So I think for now, it remains uh, still, still kind of a bit of a tug of war between these various dynamics. Okay, actually, uh, even Jerome Powell, after announcing the rate hike uh, in uh, on May third, was it? Uh, he he did in the press conference make it very clear that the Federal Reserve is not sure that they are done with rate hikes, and in fact, no rate cut seen. I'll actually read that quote to you. If Fed members are correct, it may take some time for rate cuts uh, to seem plausible. We on the committee have a view: inflation is going to come down not so quickly. Uh, if that uh, uh, forecast is broadly right, it would not be appropriate to cut rates and we won't cut rates. That Those were his... So, uh, do you think there is a, a risk to even your first quarter FY24 rate cut expectation? Could it be pushed further down? I think uh, a bit too early uh, there to say. I think if we do look at our inflation projections, it does feel like, look, we are in the middle of what is a combination of obviously the base effects from the sharp hike in inflation last year, but also in general, a normalization of pressures, whether this is around you know, supply chain tightening, which had happened uh, during the pandemic, uh, or whether it is because of uh, you know, what's happening with commodity prices, food prices more generally. So there are a lot of tailwinds to normalization of inflation. I think what's still um, not moving quite to the pace as what one would have expected is a slack opening up in the labor markets. You could argue that's a little bit of a, a lagging indicator, but certainly one which uh, the Fed would be very keenly looking 
to uh, mm -hmm. to realize a to be able to take a decision on uh, when it will be able to reverse uh, that uh, tightening cycle uh, to our view uh, it still feels like you will need to see a certain amount of slowdown in the economy for this disinflation path to be sustained and give enough conviction for the fed to yeah. be able to uh, ease for, to our mind uh, the likely path is for first quarter of next year okay first quarter I, quite a few people were speaking about uh, march of uh... 2024. Now, actually, I'm more uh, interested in your view on the Indian bond yields. Uh, this 7% that uh, the 10-year bond yield touched came as a surprise. About, uh, uh, you know, early May was when we hit uh, 7% and on one day traded even at 6.98. Uh, is this a sustainable figure? Some say that it is more because of HDFC Bank buying the, uh, ahead of the merger and some bunched up buying the insurance. But what's your take? So, I guess, uh, again, let's split this up into two bits, right? One is, what is the view on the policy trajectory? And second is, obviously, the technicals which tend to demand what is the, if, if you might, the spread of the yield premium on the long end versus where the policy rate would be. Now, I think um, it, it feels to us like we are at the top of the cycle as far as RBI is concerned. If you look at what is our expected trajectory for inflation and what seems to largely marry with what uh, RBI's view is, uh, like you said earlier, the next inflation print should probably confirm we are coming below uh, 5%, and that's a path which will sustain us uh, to one where we should be on path for what forward-looking 12-month forward, 12, 24-month forward, 12, forward-looking uh, inflation trajectory for RBI would be. It leaves us at a point where policy rates at 6.5% uh, should easily still be able to afford a real rate of, let's say, about 100 basis points uh, by this time next year or early uh, next year, Jan, March, quarter of next mm -hmm. year, which we think is sufficient to be able to anchor price expectations. So the first bit to this is, do markets really need to worry about <clears throat> particular upside risk uh, to policy rates? In our opinion, not necessarily. No. Of course, there are certain moving dynamics like what happens with monsoons and whether that can cause the inflation trajectory to again uh, go off track. But other than that, we seem, we are fairly convinced that we are at the top of the cycle. As far as the uh, spread premium is concerned, look again, there is no doubt that we have compressed on 10 year to uh, the policy rate almost half of what the average has been over the last, well, since pretty much the GFC. But then again, it's not uncommon that as markets start to price in the peak of the cycle and then potentially more rate cuts in uh, 2024, that this spread tends to, uh, uh, tends to compress. In fact, it has even gone as much as flat, even negative. Uh, in the past. So I don't think this is necessarily excessive at these levels. Of course, the early early financial year dynamics have probably played a role, but to our mind, uh, the bulk of that is done, but I won't be necessarily worried that uh, this is way disconnected at these levels. We still don't see uh, foreign investors uh, <coughs> diving for Indian debt. Uh, they have uh, definitely turned in favor of Indian mm -hmm. equities. Uh, we've seen about $2.5 billion coming in uh, in the last, what, uh, two weeks or so but uh, not in debt so much, uh, what would be the reason? And do you see uh, foreign funds attracted to uh, a yield of 7% with a very steady currency? So, uh, absolutely. I think uh, the yield to uh, the, the yield to wall ratio is definitely something which is more in favor of uh, Indian local fixed income than it necessarily is in a lot of other EM. We have discussed this in the past, Lata, as well. Mm. I mean, one obvious constraint is that investment in Indian debt is an off-index investment for benchmark uh, people. And to that extent, it typically tends to get constrained because there is a limit to how much uh, index allocators go uh, beyond uh, what is necessarily in their uh, benchmark. Index. Then okay. the wider question here as well, which is about allocations coming into EM fixed income as an mm. asset class, which at the moment, and our view is that the risk rewards definitely improving in favor of emerging markets, but it's a slow improvement. I think we need okay. clarity over the next few months that we have genuinely peaked out on the cycle in the developed world, that the relative returns become different. I mean, do remember that while yields have improved in emerging markets, but the yields you can currently get in money market funds in the US or even in treasuries have also significantly improved. So on a, oh, uh, yes. on a wall interested basis, it's not necessarily clear that a spread versus uh, what's available in core markets is necessarily uh, immediately very attractive. No, yeah, I take your point about the attraction of uh, US money market uh, yields as well, and that's risk-free return. So uh, one can imagine that. But now, uh, uh, final question to you. From what you're seeing, is it uh, safe to assume that 
it's not it is going to be a not so hard a landing it's more likely a soft landing <laughs> and if that is the market's uh, thesis then shouldn't equities be doing better so on the uh, on the landing right we have, we have sort of oscillated between sort of no landing hard landing soft landing and honestly a lot of this is characterization of where uh, the economic economic trajectory would be i would say to to my mind i i still struggle with how we are actually going to resolve to the next equilibrium without going through some level of slowdown in the global and particularly the us economy probably argues more certainly the resilience in the labor market would argue more for the fact that the landing should be soft rather than hard but what is the actual scale will partly also be determined by how much of tightness in credit and financial conditions we end up getting in the us economy because of the issues which are happening uh, with with the regional banks over there do also remember there are also tail risks coming from for example the debt ceiling issue the yes. broader geopolitics which is happening so too many moving parts at the moment which i think make it hard to know what will be the scale of that slowdown but i would still feel relatively convinced that we will need slowdown and we will need that readjustment of demand and supply functions uh, to continue to happen for the next several months till we get to that new uh, equilibrium point on the on the us and okay. the global economy Okay, so it's a little difficult to be an equity bull, is what you're saying, and I hope uh, that we will not have to discuss the debt ceiling for too long. We are given to understand it's only going to be June first. Just one number: uh, the rupee. Where, do you see it strengthening, or is eighty one, eighty two the equilibrium? Lada, for the last now what close to eight eight months, we have been in that eighty eighty three range, and I think for very yes. good reasons. I think the rupee has got carry a uh, wall in its favor. The rupee has got what seemed like fairly well behaved. oil prices uh, at the moment uh, which is in its uh, favor uh, so uh, i'd argue um, i am better disposed towards the rupee i think the range still holds but if you ask me within the range i'd be inclined to think that we move towards sort of the uh, the lower end of that range in dollar rupee rather than necessarily the higher end but i think it is good reason to believe that the range does hold Okay, eighty-one rather than eighty-three. All right, point taken. Samir Goel, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us. Right. So, well, that's it on this edition of Bazaar. We are leaving the markets in absolutely flat terrain when it comes to the big indexes, but big rally in the mid-caps. Shortbusters will take that action forward.